I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son Podcast. You know, I spent the biggest part of my life thinking God was just mad at me, just ticked, and found out in my mid-40s that that was a religious lie that nobody needed to ever believe. I thank God that I have known and understood that that I can count on him like a trusted friend. That's the reason we do this podcast six days a week. I record five of these podcasts, and, and then I put my pastor's message on Sunday on this podcast for people to grow and be strengthened and, and come to realize that God's a good God. He's not out to hurt anybody, but he wants to, to, to see us come to him to love us and to care for us. Oh, I thank God for that. Now, I I, I want you to understand something. This podcast is, is put out in a lot of different avenues and a lot of different ways. Uh, we It's shared over all kinds of different platforms. But I want to ask you, I, I want to ask you to share these podcasts on your social media, if you if you uh, if you listen to this podcast, put it on your Facebook account, Instagram, whatever you whatever you whatever social media platform you use, share these. Help us get the word out that that the Lord's a good God, and He wants more than anything to be part of every person on this planet's life. He wants to love us and care for us and minister us minister to us through his word and and that's what that's what this podcast is all about to teach people and and help them to understand and to know that they can count on God's word as much as they can count on the word of a trusted friend more they can count on him more oh i thank god for that truth today share these podcasts on your social media I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us put this put this podcast on on the internet six days a week, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, to give his word away free of charge. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over every partner of this ministry. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Now listen, I, I want to emphasize this. This podcast is free. It's been given to you free of charge. Now give it away. Encourage others to find out what God's Word says to them, for them, and about them. My prayers for you come off Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, I've adopted Paul's prayers for the world that we live in, for every living soul that walks the face of this earth. I pray that their eyes would be open to the love and the mercy and the grace that God has for them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. 
and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to publicly thank God for his eye-opening. His, he opened my eyes my spiritual eyes to his love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness. And I am so thankful. I praise him today for that, but for my eyes being opened. And I pray that your eyes will be opened to the same love that he has for you. Oh, I thank God that God's no respecter of person. He loves us all the same, and he's for us, not against us, and he will he will show you that love if you will allow those that the eyes of your inner man to be opened to to understand and to know just how much God loves you. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light that I should be, the vessel that you can shine through. Lord, I praise you for all you're doing in this podcast. Lord, the people's lives that are being touched. Guide and direct in their lives. Help them to understand and to know your will for their lives. Your will through your word. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all you're doing, all you have done, and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. You know, we've been in Romans 8. And we're going to be in Romans 8 today and probably tomorrow. I don't know about the rest of the week. I've, I've run out of scriptures unless I'm going to back up. And, and I, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not impossible. I just, uh, the 8th the chapter of Romans is such a blessing. Such a blessing, and and I want that's what I want to emphasize to you. If you'll get into this word, get into God's word, and understand the goodness and the love that He has for you, you'll come to realize, you'll come to understand just how much He's for you, and that's what this podcast is all about. I want you to come to know and understand who you are in Jesus Christ who you are in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you can find that out in God's Word. Uh, Romans 8, 38, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I want to read that in the in the New Living Translation. It says, Paul said, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Now, you you see, Paul was making this point to to the Romans or in Romans he wanted he wanted the the people to know that he was talking to that there was nothing nothing he said i am convinced that nothing can separate us from god's love and he wanted that the the people that he was talking to to be that convinced of that truth too 
and and that's what that's what I'm here on this podcast doing is is doing my dead level best to allow the Lord Jesus Christ his holy spirit to guide me and direct me to convince you of that same truth that God loves you beyond your your comprehension Beyond more than you can comprehend, God loves you, and He cares for you, and He wants more than anything for you to know that. He wants you to know and understand that He's here to help. He's here to love you and 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 strengthen you in this time that you're going through. And I don't know what you're going through. I have no idea. In that the world that we lived in has changed so much in the last, you know, 9, 10, 12 months. I don't know how long it's been, but it's going on a year. I mean, it's close. It's getting close to a year that all this pandemic and all this all this craziness had st- has started. So I don't know what's going on in your life. I didn't know what was going on in your life before that. But what I want you to understand and to know is that God is for you. And I want you to be convinced like Paul was that that he loves you. Nothing can separate you. Nothing, absolutely nothing can separate you from God's love. When I come to that conclusion and come to, to the knowledge of that truth, it changed my life. And, and you know, I reference Luke 15, 11 through 24 a lot. Uh, hadn't here lately, but in the past I've referenced it a lot. I referenced it yesterday for the first time in a, in a while. But you know, the young man in that in that uh, story is a picture of me. He's a picture of me. I I came to my I came back home to my father, my heavenly father, spiritually bankrupt. Nothing left. I had I had spent all the 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 uh, spiritual uh, I don't know how to put it strength I guess that I'd had in my lifetime I'd spent it all I was I was spiritually bankrupt when I come home but you know what when I come to realize what Luke fifteen eleven through twenty four was what really was and that was a testament. <laughs> to God's love and his mercy and his willingness to be part of our lives and to restore us. Oh, it changed me. It it did. It really did. And and when 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 you come to know and understand that that story is for you and it's for every person that walks the face of this earth whether they're born again or whether they're lost, they you can come to you can come to God. And expect the same treatment, love, mercy, tenderness. You know, that boy came home prepared to be a servant, a hired servant in his own father's house. But did he have to be a servant? No, he didn't. Absolutely not. He didn't. He was restored to where he had came, where he had left. And that was a son. He that the father wanted him to know it. Said the father saw him at a distance and ran, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and put a robe on his back and shoes on his feet and a ring on his finger and that signet ring told him and everybody around him that he was part of that family. Oh, it it thrills my heart to be able to tell you that God wants to do you the same way. He done me the same way. Oh, and it thrills my heart to know that he'll do you that way. He, he, will, he will change your life like it's never been changed before. All you have to do is give him your life. Give him what he wants. He wants first place in your life. You see, that young man, all he could think about in, in Luke 15, all he could think about but it was the material things of life. He didn't realize that he walked away from the, 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 the most love that he had ever had in his life. He walked away from it and spent all that he had. But the father, 
Now, I want, I want, I want you to understand this. I, I'm going to tell you this straight up. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there yet in what I'm about to tell you. But that father, he saw his son take everything that he had worked for and go waste it. But yet, when his son came home, what did the father do? He welcomed him home. He was ecstatic that he was home. And he threw a party in the boy's honor to, to, to uh, celebrate his homecoming. Why? Why did he do that? Because he loved him. <laughs> that young man, that young man was dead. He said it. Let me read that. I, I want to read that. I want to read that in the New Living Translation. That's something that I don't know if I've ever done that or not, read it in the New Living Translation. But uh, 11 through 24, it says, To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I am. I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, his younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his field to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that, he, that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. With, when, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and, and you, and am no longer worthy to be called your, called your son. Take me on as a, a hired servant. So he turned or he returned home to his father and his and while he he was still a long way off his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him his son said to him father i have sinned against both heaven and you and i'm no more worthy to be called your son but his father said to his servant quick bring the finest robe in the house, and put it on him. Bring a ring on his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and now returned to life. He was lost, and now he is found. So the party began. The father said he's been dead. He's returned home alive. Alive. You know, the Bible says that he came to himself in the King James Version. He came to himself. He came to understand the love that God had or that the Father had for him. And that's what I want you to understand. I want you to be totally convinced, as Paul said. He said, I am convinced that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. And that's what I want you to to be convinced of today that nothing can separate you from God's love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness. God loves you that much. He wants you to understand that. He wants you to know that, and he wants you to come to him. Whether whether you're, you're uh, born again and just away from him, or whether you're not away from him, just just you may not you not may not be where he wants you to be in your life. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to seek him out. And if you if you are born again, seek his will out in his word. Seek his will out in his word. Seek him in everything you do. And and, and it, it'll change your life. I know it changed mine. It changed mine. It just it thrills me to know that 
and understand that, that if you will get in God's word and allow God to, to speak to you and minister to you through his word, it'll change you just the same. Oh, I thank God for that. But if you're not born again today, I want to, I want to ask you, don't you think it's time that you give your life to one that can change it, can really change it? You know, I, I read a, a devotional this morning. It was talking about a, a man told this pastor, said, you know, when I, when I get my life straightened out, I'll be back to church. And, and, uh, the pastor told that man, he said, do you, do you clean yourself up before you take a bath? And what he was, what he was getting at is, is he wanted the man to understand that God will clean you up if you'll come to, come to church, if you'll come to him. And, and, uh, he, he wanted him to know that. You know, I heard a preacher talk about it years ago. He said, you know, he said, can you clean a, a fish? Before you catch it, no, you got to catch it first. It, it's got to be it's got to be in your possession before you can clean it and dress it for for your consumption. So why why try to straighten yourself up before you come to God? Leave that up to Him. You know Romans ten and nine said, "If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised Him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved." It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. It don't take a it don't take a, a six month sabbatical to, to get yourself cleaned up. No, it takes a confessing with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, as Lord of your life, and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. God wants you to know that. He wants you to know that. He wants you to see and understand that that's all it takes. And then when you get in his word, he'll start ministering to you. And he'll start helping you. You know, I told a man here a while back, you know, you know, this, the, I've got a greenhouse that sits out in the field in front of my house. And, and uh, I said, you know, the Lord ministered to me in that greenhouse in so many ways. But you know the biggest way, but the biggest part of my his ministering to me in that greenhouse was through his word. I ran around for almost three years with headphones in my ears, listening to his word, listening to good sound Bible teaching, strengthening me, helping me. And God wants to do that for you today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life and watch him change your life forever. Hey, I so appreciate you tuning into this podcast. Send us your prayer request. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can agree on that your prayer request is answered. Glory to God. Send us your prayer request. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. Send us your testimony. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. Hey, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you so much for faithfully sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has called us to do, what we are commissioned to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return on everything that you sow into this ministry. Hey, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into this ministry. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.